The journey of Michael Campbell, the only Maori to ever win a major championship, has been driven by powerful forces within him, both on and off the golf course. In two Open Championships at the old course, ten years apart, Campbell excited and inspired a new generation of golfers, both in his home country and around the world, to want to be like Mike. From the small town of Howra in New Zealand, where he was born, to the small town of St Andrews in Scotland, where he nearly made history, Campbell has been proving doubters wrong his whole life. This is Tales of the Open. This is the story of Michael Campbell. Two steady opening rounds of 71. There emerges a name virtually unknown to many, Michael Campbell. Uh, I just watched on, on YouTube recently about um, my, my third round. It was, I, I putted so well, I hit the ball so so well. Everything was just, you know, on, on song. You know, I think when you play your best golf, every department of your game's got to be perfect. And it was that day. It was just incredible how I played. Oh, another view of Michael Campbell, the promising New Zealander. Seventh hole, four under par. Look at this one, beautiful shot. Right at the flag. start. Three birdies, four pars. And I remember playing with Brett Ogle and uh, he, he couldn't believe what I shot because it was a tough day but I was just enjoying the, the, the moment. Campbell for a three at the ninth. Looks good. Well, that's a move there. Michael Campbell comes up, uh, now joins him at 600, because it's a long time since we had a man from New Zealand crowned as our Open champion. Who knows what today and tomorrow will reveal. After Campbell's front nine in the third round, the New Zealander was four under for his day in strong winds and all of a sudden found himself atop the leaderboard in a tie for first place. We have to say that not only does he play well, but he appears to enjoy playing the game. Loves every minute of it, thrives on it. And I love Lynx golf. Lynx golf is my favourite way to play. Uh, I love, you got to use your imagination, you know, you got to use your creativity. Uh, I just love it. I love Lynx golf. I think it started um, because the golf course I started playing in, in Wellington, that that farm I told you about, it was always windy, very undulating, it's a short course, but it's, it's a tough, short course, and very lengthy as well, so I'm used to that sort of stuff, and I love, I, I just, it, I thrive on it, I thrive on links golf. Two good pars followed on the 10th and 11th holes, before Campbell drove his ball just short of the par 4 12th. Look at this one, look at this, look at this, look at Beautiful, beautiful putt. So we have championship leader, Michael Campbell's going to be the leader in the championship when he taps this in. That's seven under par, this to go seven under. What a great performance. Campbell now held the outright lead in the open. Young and unafraid of the big stage, the Maori man was far from resting on his laurels, however. Figure in the black and white striped shirt, New Zealand's colours, Bruce, my Campbell, this for yet another birdie. Could have got it. Well, he's putting some round together. We all said it was so windy here that uh, anyone breaking par would have achieved something. And just look at the score that he's putting together here. And I think the average that day was 74 or something because it was blowing about 25 knots, 30 knots, and I played so well. But here's a man that hasn't even looked like coming near a disaster all day. I like it. 
Proud Mike Zippy. After making birdie on 12 and 13, Campbell needed an up and down from 50 yards on the par 5 14th to go 7 under for his day and 9 under for the championship. Well, Campbell's about to try and play a little flick shot onto the top tier. Oh, he's just played it on nicely. That's a good shot. That should give him a reasonable birdie opportunity here at 4 and uh, 14 rather and uh, give him an even better chance to extend his lead. It's about 12 feet and it should just drift slightly from his right hand side. Fairly swift. Yeah. And the reaction says it all. Campbell now held a three shot lead, and with solid pars on the 15th and 16th to boot, the New Zealander would find himself four shots clear with just two holes to play in his round. Uh, result and uh, now all he's got to worry about is the 17th. Uh, he's enjoying his round today, isn't he? And it's incredible golf that he's putting together. Seven under for his round. After hitting a decent drive on 17, Campbell set up for his approach into the infamous road hole at St Andrews. Campbell was looking for a hopefully uneventful par to ensure he held the lead heading into the final day. But what occurred next was far from uneventful. Yeah, and that's found the bunker. Well, not only has he found the bunker, he's so tight up against the face of it, and there really is not an awful lot of room to play with in there. Now you can uh, hold your breath if you're a New Zealander. Had this uh, miraculous bunker shot on 17 where it was against the lip and I got out, don't know how I got out, but it, it got out. Can you get it up high enough, straight enough to get out? Life changing. He has. He got out. Not only that, he got there. Tom Morris have said of that. Miraculous. And now Campbell. Campbell who has destroyed a lot of the, the myth of the bunker here at the road hole. Nine under for the championship, leading by four. And still leads. Well, that was uh, bordering on the awesome, wasn't it? Anything could have happened. You could really fear for him in that situation. Could have been a collapse. And there we saw a stroke which I think we'll always remember. An incredible shot from the road hole bunker, where Campbell managed to hit his ball to two feet from the hole after lying just six inches from the deep revetted face. The shot, followed by Campbell's own version of the Are You Not Entertained celebration, gave the New Zealander overnight stardom. Because that was my first tour, or first year on tour, uh, on the European tour. So I went from you know, the Challenge Tour, I went from the Euro uh, Australasian Tour to the Challenge Tour to the European Tour. So it was my first full year on the European Tour, and I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is the real deal. And at 65 for this third round of the championship, and at this moment, he has a lead of four. Was I surprised? Absolutely. I mean, I just, I was just having fun. I was just enjoying the moment of being there and just um, enjoying the atmosphere of, of the Open at St Andrews. And the golf was just a nice byproduct of me feeling comfortable, relaxed, and and pretty much. You know, I said before, I played my best golf ever uh, on that uh, third day, on Saturday. 
Um, and then I remember going to the press conference on the sad day. It was the first time I was exposed to 300 reporters you know, at any one time under the same roof. That was daunting for me. I never experienced that before as a, as a player, as a professional. It's only your second opener, having said that. You're obviously not intimidated or worried at all by, by the size of the championship. No, well, I'm more of a guy who who's, uh, he likes to be excited rather than nervous. I wasn't nervous whatsoever at the I was excited to you know, be in the position I am and um, it's very nice for tomorrow and I think tomorrow is a different day um, so it's a matter of keeping things in perspective and just go there and have fun. After his third round 65, on a day where only two of the remaining top 15 players broke 70, Campbell held a two-shot lead from Constantina Rocca. Suddenly the man from Howrah was all the rage in Scotland as he was looking to claim golf's original major in his first season in Europe. Good afternoon and welcome to the old course at St Andrews. So much golfing history has been written here at the headquarters of the game and more will follow this afternoon. The final round of this, the 25th St Andrews Open. But right now, the breeze is really blowing hard and if these are the playing conditions for the afternoon, well, luck as ever will play its part. And the New Zealander Michael Campbell conceded yesterday that luck was a factor in the shot of the championship so far. His amazing recovery from the road hole bunker that enabled him to stay ahead of the field at nine under. Wonderful round of 65 from the young New Zealander. To lead by two from Costantino Rocca and by three from Australia's Steve Elkington, but a most international of leaderboards. Sunday, uh, I need to tell you a story uh, behind the scenes uh, on Sunday. Basically, IMG, look, I'll take full responsibility. IMG said, Michael, would you like to uh, chop her from Dundee? Because I stayed in Dundee for the whole week. It takes like an hour, nearly half an hour, but an hour because of the traffic. Um, do you want to chopper it from Dundee to the to, to the golf course? I said, fantastic idea. Well, it was the worst idea in the world. It had nothing to do with IMG. It wasn't their fault. It just it was me changing my routine. But and so I remember going. Uh, my father was there. My coach was there. My my girlfriend at the time was there. There was four of us waiting and waiting. It's forty five minutes late. This chopper, right? Funny turns up. It only takes five minutes to St Andrews, but yet we've got to travel another 10 minutes to the golf course, right? And I remember jumping into the van, grabbing my clubs, and I said to the driver, I don't care what you do, you know, I could be the first person in history to actually miss my tea time leading, leading the open. I said, just drive on the curb, just drive the, on the wrong side of the road, I've got to get there. But as you know, it's another five minutes to the, to the uh, driving range, and the traffic there is horrendous. So I get to the driving range, I had probably about five balls. And I'm rushing back, so I'm getting the first tee, I'm leading the open, and I'm I'm obviously full of anxiety already. You know, you add it add the, the the fact that, you know, I just I've been rushing around, didn't warm up properly, didn't putt, practice putt, straight to the first tee. On the tee, Michael Campbell. He said many times over the last 12 or 14 hours he's got to go out today and enjoy himself. We shall see. You know, thank God it's a big fairway. <laughs> you can't miss it. <laughs> if I miss that fairway, I'll be in trouble. A bit of an edgy one down the left side. A very anxious tee shot, not just caused by Campbell's position on the leaderboard, meant that it was less than an ideal start in the final round. However, Campbell still had a chance to save an opening par. Back to the first. Campbell for a par. Well done. Put it 
over 150 to 1 on yesterday and our latest price of John Hunt is racing this morning. He's 5 to 2 all of a sudden. On the second hole, again, a chance for par. Campbell. Well, that's a confident stroke. There was no staggering into the hole. Two holes gone, two pars. He stays at nine under. Four holes in and Campbell was level par for his final round. But as John Daly began to make a charge, Campbell needed to make a move. Unfortunately, Campbell's first move was in the wrong direction. A bogey on the par 5 fifth was followed by a bogey on the sixth hole. Uh, Campbell to drop just one shot at the sixth. Ooh, he started stepping forward to that because it blew out. Seven under, keep calm. Suddenly, Campbell was on the ropes, and after a tough start to his day, he had a difficult job to arrest the slide. Over the back of the par four seventh hole, he faced a tricky downhill chip. Now here's the third shot of Campbell. Is it far enough? It's a good one. It's a brilliant one. Oh, what a shot. Well done, that man. A beautiful par on the seventh hole offered some hope, but that was quickly extinguished with a bogey on the eighth. Missed chances followed on nine and ten before Campbell teed off on the par three eleventh hole. Finding the devilish Strath bunker, Campbell eventually holed an eight-footer for his bogey to move back to five under par for the championship as Daly soared ahead. Four straight pars, however, and Campbell was right back in the thick of the championship as Daly was faltering in his closing holes on a brutally tough day of wind. At four under par for the championship and now five over for his final round, Campbell still had a chance to win. He needed to gain two shots in his last two holes to tie Daly. His approach to 17 was a good one. Just setting that out to the right, centre, front of the green. And a nice kick, kicked off the bank. That's a beautiful shot for Campbell. Well, if he popped that one in, goes to five under, and the three at the last, we could have a playoff. Has he given it enough? He certainly has. No, he hasn't. It was, it was drifting away from him to the right, and he sort of felt that his chance went with it. There you are. Nothing worked today. The birdie pot agonizingly missed, however, meaning Campbell needed to eagle to tie on 18. Meanwhile, Campbell's playing partner, Costantino Rocca, needed just a birdie on the closing hole to tie Daly. What transpired next proved to be one of the greatest five-minute stretches in Open Championship history. I saw I had a chance to win. I had a putt on the last hole. I hit it, drove it pin high, about 50 feet away. I'm just trying to do my sums, and Campbell at uh, four under, he's got to make a two. He can knock it on and hold the putt. He'll be ripping this one. Told you. He'll come off that wee shoulder, he's up on the green. Got a putt. He's got a putt, uh, probably for the playoff. And, and what I really enjoyed that day, really, was uh, at the very end, in the last group with myself and Constantino Rocca, um, walking over this walking bridge there, and, and the people behind you roped off, and you had this amazing amphitheater around you. You know, the grandstands, the leaderboards, your name up there. It's just uh, something that golfer will always dream about, and to win an Open would have been. Um, you know, amazing to, to, to achieve, but... Either Campbell or Rocker must hole out from where they are now to force a tie. And I had a putt. Oh, it was a good effort from such long range. Of all these trials and tribulations, if he 
Mays that is going to end up just a, a shot behind. Amazing, isn't it? And obviously, Rocker had this amazing putt from the Valley, <laughs> Valley of Sin that was, uh, was something uh, amazing to watch to be there. He just duffed his chip, you know. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, so that means I'm, I'll probably tie for second because uh, I thought there's no way he's going to hold that. John's going to win this. He doesn't hold it, Daly. John Daly will be the champion. And Rocket, he holds that putt. Look at this. I remember hugging him and thinking, should I be angry or be happy for him? Oh, I was both because thinking that's, that's nice of you to make it and unfortunately he didn't win, win the playoff. As Daly triumphed in a playoff over Rocker. It's official, Daly, John Daly, the 1995 Open Champion. Campbell finished just a shot behind when everything that could go wrong for the New Zealander did. For Campbell, however, it proved an invaluable experience. Uh, it was an amazing, amazing event for me. Uh, it made me kind of be respected as a player from my peers, which is important, I think. Um, so that, that week was definitely a life-changing event for me.